As economics is all about scarcity and choices, there will be situations where a decision needs to be made between varying alternatives, and one or more of them must be given up. And we call this a trade-off, and these trade-offs happen all the time and are faced by each of the main economic agents, households, firms and businesses, and the government. Households, so that's me and you and our families, might have to decide whether to go on holiday or buy a new television. Firms and businesses might need to decide whether to employ an extra worker or invest in updating their equipment. And the government might face the trade-off of whether to spend more on healthcare or education. Trade-offs create a choice which has to be made, and in making the choice creates an opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is the alternative given up once we've made the decision, and so it's also known as the next best alternative foregone. This idea is really crucial to the whole study of economics, because whenever we analyse choices, we should look at the opportunity cost and ask ourselves, what was given up in making this choice? And was it worth it? Let's look at the opportunity cost of the trade-offs we mentioned before. If the household decides to take the holiday, they have to give up the new TV, and so this is the opportunity cost. If the firm decides to employ an extra worker, the opportunity cost is the output that their new equipment could have produced. And if the government puts more spending into education, the opportunity cost is that it gives up improvements that it could have made to healthcare and the benefits this could have brought to people's health. We've then got to ask, was it worth it? Was the holiday worth giving up the new TV? And would the new equipment have made it better for existing employees? Is education worth more than healthcare? Economists are often tasked to explore situations just like these. The idea of opportunity cost can be shown using a diagram called a Production Possibility Frontier, or PPF. This shows the maximum possible output of two goods or services that could be produced in a given time period. And that could be for an individual, a firm, or the economy as a whole. So the PPF here shows production decision between cars and bottles of wine. And we've chosen cars and wine just randomly, but there could be any two products on the axis. Indeed, if we wanted to show production in the economy as a whole, We'd label them capital and consumer goods because we can sort pretty much all goods into one of these two categories. On this PPF, we could decide to produce only cars, which would put us at this point here. This means we're spending all our resources making cars, which leaves nothing left to make wine. Or we could choose to produce only wine up to this point here, but more likely we'd want some combination of the two, like somewhere here with a bit more wine than cars. The curve represents the maximum amount of combinations that it's possible to achieve. The link to opportunity cost here should be clear, because if we increase car production from C1 to C2, we'll need to give up wine between W1 and W2, and so this is the opportunity cost of making more cars. We could put some numbers in as well, and say we're currently producing 10 cars and 100 bottles of wine. And if we were to increase the production of cars so we make 12, we can only produce 90 bottles of wine, and this would mean the opportunity cost of making two extra cars would be 10 bottles of wine. Any point on the PPF shows that resources are being used efficiently, but it's just a basic choice. Do we want more cars or more wine? But if we produce inside the PPF, it's inefficient. We could produce more of both, and so it's not a good use of our resources. A point outside the PPF is unobtainable, we can't reach this output given our current resources. I know we all wish we could do more in the same amount of time. Imagine being able to do an hour's worth of work in 30 minutes, but unfortunately, it's just not possible. So how can we produce more cars and wine together? Well, the only possibility is if the production possibility frontier expands outwards, and that only happens if productive capacity increases. Maybe we invest in some new equipment, which makes our wine and car industries more productive. On the flip side, if productive capacity worsens and we can produce less, the PPF shifts in. And that would be bad news for our wine and car industries. It's also possible that we might be able to produce more cars, but the same amount of wine. Maybe if the productivity improvements were limited to the car industry. In which case, the PPF would shift like this kind of stretches out, leaving winemaking capacity the same, but we can get more cars. So that's the end of this video, where we've covered trade-offs, which is when you're faced with a decision between different alternative options. And this leads into the idea of opportunity cost, which is the actual thing and the benefits that you have to sacrifice once you've made this decision. 
And finally, I took you through production possibility frontiers, which give us a graphical picture of opportunity cost by comparing production decisions between two different goods or categories of goods.